But it's to West Africa you must go if you want to see the ultimate in termite architecture. The biggest, the most complex and the most subtly sophisticated of all their buildings. This immense fortress towering 15 feet above me is the work of a Nigerian termite. But what could be in these towers? They sound hollow. Well, there's an easy way to find out. Very little. This long chimney is virtually empty. To find the inhabitants, you have to penetrate much further into the nest. The workers are continually building, constructing magnificent arches, vaults and corridors. Among them are the bigger soldiers, their huge heads filled with the muscles needed to power their great jaws. Each worker places its pellet of mud in a position demanded by a master plan, though how they are able to do so, we don't begin to understand. They store their food, dead wood, in special chambers throughout the nest. Wood is very hard to digest, but they extract the most from it by first eating it and then cultivating a fungus on their dung, which extracts more of the nutriment. They then eat the fungus. This fungus grows nowhere else but inside termite hills, where the temperature is exactly right for it. In the very heart of the fortress lives the queen. She produces a thousand eggs a day to provide fresh recruits for the teams of gardeners and masons and the ranks of the army. She resides in a special chamber which the workers renovate and adapt to accommodate her growing bulk. After a year or two, she is in effect a prisoner for she is far too big to squeeze through the corridors that lead to her residence. But that is of no consequence. She's so bloated with egg-producing machinery that she couldn't move even if she wanted to. And her eggs, as she produces them, are carried away to the nurseries by the attentive and indefatigable workers. There are a million and a half insects in this one colony. They and their gardens generate a lot of heat. Within this enclosed building, the air could easily become foul and hot. The fungus, and therefore the colony itself, would die if the temperature varies by more than two degrees from 31 degrees centigrade. But the colony has a solution, and it's an architectural one. This, six feet beneath the surface of the earth, is the cellar of the colony. Its floor is studded with shafts that go down 12, 14 feet, down to the water table, where the worker termites can gather moist mud to carry on their building. And its ceiling is a great plate which carries the entire weight of the colony. But on its underside is what I think is really the most remarkable animal structure I've ever seen. Lines of concentric veins. They are made of mud and they absorb moisture from the colony above. And as it evaporates, it leaves this encrustation of white salts on them. But more important than that, as it evaporates, it cools. So that this, the cellar, is much the coolest part of the colony. And it's this that drives the air conditioning. 
The air, continuously heated by all the activity in the middle of the building, rises up into the upper stories. But this basement, thanks to these veins, is many degrees colder. And it draws down the stale, warm air from the colony above, down long chimneys which go right round the edge of the cellar. As it does so, there's a seepage of gas through porous dimples in the walls. Oxygen flows in and carbon dioxide out so that the mixture approximates to fresh air. So these spires and turrets are key elements in an air conditioning system of a near perfect mansion that has stout walls to protect its inhabitants from the elements and from their enemies, deep dungeons where they can gather moisture, space inside for barns where they can store their food and gardens where they can grow their crops. And yet all this was built by tiny insects with minute brains working in total cooperation in the complete darkness. We might like to think that we are the most accomplished architects that the world has ever seen, but if this was built in human terms with every worker termite the size of me, then it would stand a mile high. And we haven't done that yet.